Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you terrible news. Disaster has struck and striked. I have... I have new pens here to bring you that I am drawing with. Incredible, well-crafted, and, and magical pens. And I want to show you them now. And I'm going to draw with them. But the bad news um, that I will tell you right now is that I did an unpackaging. These pens came in this well-packaged package. And I did an unpackaging and unveiling. It was incredible. Uh, but then I was editing the video and it turned out... I'm sorry to say this, that it, but it turned out that the video footage uh, was in some insidious way corrupted. So I will do some sort of uh, post-mortem re-unpackaging now. Okay, so bear with me. Okay, so here, here, here was the package uh, that it came in. And so then I like took all the stuff out and there was a, a great deal of bubble wrap. Um, there was, it was wonderful bubble wrap and there was some cardboard. Okay, here was the cardboard that the pens came in. There was cardboard and bubble wrap. It was very nice. And I used, I used this over, this comically oversized uh, knife, you know, to cut it all open. It was great, right? I was like, ah, knife, right? I'm telling you how it all went down. So uh, before I unveiled these, these great pens, um, I, I unveiled these three objects, which mystified me. I'll admit it. I realized almost immediately that this object was a marble of sorts. I think this was just a sort of bonus of sorts that he sent along with it. It's got all sorts of weird 3D flowery stuff going on inside of it. I can't really describe it, but hopefully you can kind of see. If I was going to have a glass eye, I think I'd like for it to be... Whoa, you can see my face upside down inside of it. Can you guys see that? That's crazy. Oh, oh guys, and I forgot to... Guys. I forgot to say who all this stuff is from. From this guy. I, there were more business cards, but... um, This is from Fire... All these pens are from Fire Spider Glass. I hope this is his actual business phone number and not his personal phone number. Um, but, you know, check them out. It's got a website, firespider.glass, and an Instagram page. Check them out on Instagram. Got a bunch of cool stuff. And a cool logo. I like that. I like that a lot. And then I took these two little things. I spent a long time fiddling with these two little things, trying to figure out if they were, you know, some sort of puzzle or brain teaser, twister. Um, if they were supposed to fit together some way or... Maybe if there were some, maybe if there were some sort of jewelry, or um, I realize this sort of looks like the hyoid. The hyoid is the only bone in the human body. It's in your throat or on, near your esophagus, which the only bone in the human body which doesn't touch any other bones. That's a cool factoid. So I did a lot of this and a lot of this. You guys hear my neighbors upstairs? This happens a lot during the day. My neighbors play my ceiling like a bongo. I learned that my desk wasn't flat as this marble rolled by it a few times. And then I unveiled these two pens, which were really amazing. I mean, this one on the inside of it somehow has a jellyfish. I mean, I've seen videos of people doing glass blowing, and uh, I still have no idea how it's done. It's mind boggling, to say the least. On the tip, also, it looks beautiful. It's like this crazy marbling, and oh, it's amazing. I love it. And the other one is beautiful in its simplicity. I like them both. And then, thankfully, not too very long after that, was when I realized that these two little things were actually little holders on which to place these things so that they wouldn't roll away, and I was very thankful with, that I realized that, because um, I would have been sad if it was the YouTube comments after uploading the video that would have told me that these were these were little pen holders. So yeah, I was happy. I was happy with that rev revelation. And then I began drawing with these two beautiful pens. All right, so right off the bat, you can probably tell that there's something drastically different that I'm doing here. That is, 
red ink. Some people think it looks pink, but no. Uh, the bottle actually said scarlet. I'm not good at keeping all these different tones and shades of things uh, different apart in my head. I mean, I, I call purple pink sometimes, and the rest of the time I call pink purple. This is actually scarlet. Uh, I call it red. Um, and I, uh, I don't know what was going on, but... You know, for some reason, something clicked or misfired in my brain, and instead of doing my normal black ink drawings, I did a black and red drawing today. Well, and, and white, if you count the paper. Anyways, it was a lot of fun. You just uh, dip the... These glass... The glass pens are dip pens. There's all sorts of different dip pens. Pretty much anything uh, that you dip. You, you dip the tip of the pen in the ink, and all sorts of dip pens have different ways... Uh, to kind of hold the ink in the tip of the pen and distribute it across the paper as you drag the tip of the paper, I mean, tip of the pen across the paper. Lots of um, pens um, have like a little slit, like a little kind of built-in reservoir in the in the tip of the pen and some sort of weird uh, capillary, some, I don't know. There's a lot of all sorts of scientific things you could probably talk about, but uh, somehow it works and... Uh, yeah, it's fun. One thing you do have to be careful about, I will warn this, a, a, a word of warning, a cautionary tale for all you aspiring glass, glass pen, dip pen inkers, is that if you use um, something like this, a little, uh, a, if you have a glass, a glass bottle for your glass pens, or if you have a glass bottle that you're like rinsing them off in, both of which I had, both a glass ink bottle and a glass water bottle for rinsing things out, you have to be very careful because glass on glass uh, is a recipe for disaster. I did actually at one point, much to my chagrin, chip a very tiny, tiny piece off of the tip of one of these pens, which uh, I'm not exactly sure when this happened. And it wasn't the end of the world. It wasn't a huge uh, disaster. I didn't have to call in FEMA or anything. But uh, I actually continued drawing. This happened halfway through the drawing, and I continued drawing with the pen about you know, for the rest, whole rest of the drawing. Um, but it could have easily been much, much worse. And it actually made um, the drawing uh, and the pen itself a little bit more versatile because uh, it kind of it kind of chipped the tip of the pen diagonally, and so if I held the pen one way, I could make wider lines, and if I held the pen, if I rotated it, I could make finer lines. I, I don't know how these, um, like in this case, uh, fire spider glass, I don't know how, how they make these pens, but uh, I think that they kind of, when they make these, the tips of the pens, I think they kind of snap them off anyways, so um, it's, not th it's not that far-fetched, or it's not that far away from you know, how the pen itself was born. But you do have to be careful. So um, if you have to choose an ink reservoir or something to rinse your pens off in, plastic or something that's not glass or is probably better, you know. just So just be careful. A lot of people will probably stray away from using the glass pens um, at all because, you know, they say, I'm, Peter, I can't use glass. I'm clumsy. I, I drop my pens all the time. Um, and that's fine. Personally, I think the glass pens are cool just because that extra, that extra, you know, edge of danger, you know, in the back of your head, you're thinking, wow, this thing is so fragile. It's cool. It's different. Usually, um, you know, my pens are some of the most, uh, I mean, I'm holding a pen right here, here right now. Well, this is just a normal big pen, but you know, this is like the, the cheapest, most resilient thing. You can chew on it. You could throw it across the room. It would be fine. It would work well. Some of my other pens, of course, uh, especially the tips of the pens are very fragile, but if you drop them, especially if the lid is on it, it's fine. Um, but it's cool to have it come at the pen with a very fragile, fine china approach, I think. It, I, would, I would recommend it to anyone, to almost anyone. Maybe not uh, like a baby, because the, the tips of these pens are actually fairly sharp. Uh, maybe if you were like holding the pen in your hand and you absentmindedly went up to you know, scratch behind your ear or something, uh, you really could probably do some damage uh, by way of poking a hole in your own face. I could see that happening, but that could probably happen with almost any pen, but more so with this pen. I don't know why I'm imagining that so vividly right now, or I don't know, my mind goes down strange avenues sometimes. Anyways, these pens are cool. Um, I will admit, 
uh, that this ink, I was using Windsor and Newton ink. I have lots of different inks. Uh, some of the inks are in these bottles are not even the inks that originally came in these bottles. I keep like repackaging the inks. I like pour them out into some other glass bottle just because it looks cooler and then end up pouring them back out of that into this. And uh, so I have no idea what inks I have and what bottles, but this ink, uh, I started the drawing with the ink and then I kind of regretted it because this ink is not the best ink for this. Um, I don't know what ink is the best. I'm not, I'm no ink scientist. I probably should be by now. Um, but usually when I want to start drawing, I just grab an ink and start or just grab a pen and start uh, instead of wanting to do a bunch of research. But this is probably not the best. Uh, it obviously worked fine. You can see here it was going well and I had a great time and it turned out just perfectly. But the one downside I noticed is that I would start drawing for a while. I would, you know, draw a few lines probably. I probably only had to dip it every five or ten minutes. I don't know. I have a poor concept of the passage of time. But I, I'd dip it every five or ten minutes. I'd go back for two or three dips and eventually... Um, however, the the ink would start drying on the tip of the pen, and so it would, uh, I don't know, it wouldn't dip and flow across and out of the tip of the pen as well, and so I would have to rinse it off with a little water brush I had to dip it in my little ink, my water, my glass water thing that might have chipped it. Uh, I'm not explaining this very well. I would rinse off the tip, right, of the pen with water, so it would be a nice, fresh, clean pen tip for dipping, and... Um, I don't know, what I'm saying is maybe it, it got kind of sticky when it got dry. And one of these, actually the, the, the jellyfish pen, seemed to have deeper grooves. The grooves almost seemed too, too deep in the, um, in the tip, it, which seemed great at first. But as the ink started drying, um, it... Uh, it was hard to rinse out later, which I, I mean, I was perfectly capable to rinse it out with my little, I used one of these Pentel water brushes or some, one of those water brushes I was using for watercolors a long time ago and it came out fine, but I don't know, I, I'm gonna have to experiment more in the future with different types of ink, but I like experimenting. It's gonna be great. Anyways, um, yeah, check this guy out in the description. Thanks for sending me these awesome pens. I had a great time drawing as always and uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram, too, if you're not already following me. It's all in the description. Yeah. Have, have a good day, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.